Hi, everyone. Let's take a look at what I call prompt cycling. This is totally a made-up name. I just came up with it because it seemed very fitting, and it is just one method or technique that I use to study prompts and trying to figure out mid-journey. This could also work for some other image generators as well. So let's take a look. First things first, I am using Midjourney version 5.1, which is the current default version. So in the prompts, you don't see me specify this aspect ratio because it is the default. So I don't need to give this parameter in the prompts. Second, I am using aspect ratio of the widescreen, but you could use any other aspect ratio parameter. I typically use this just because it makes it easy for sharing. So also it makes some cool images. So let's continue. So what is prompt cycling? Prompt cycling means that you keep one element constant while you systematically change another element. And then you observe what effects that particular variable cycling has on the output. That's about as scientific as I go with it. Here is the starting point. I am using for this demonstration the subject as enigma. So if I only use that one word in the prompt, enigma, this is what I get. So here's the prompt, enigma, and then I put the variable and the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the parameter, and you put two dashes and then AR to specify the aspect ratio. If you don't use any aspect ratio, you just get a square image. The first one, I just added digital, and this is what the digital ones look like. So Enigma Digital. And at this point, I will just observe what I see. In this one, I added Techno Noir as the variable. Now, Techno Noir is not actually a style, it's called Tech Noir, but I have found that I get better images with using Techno Noir, so this is actually one of my go-to things to throw at prompts. And here are the images for that. Next one, futuristic. Now, when you run these images or when you do the first run with the first variable, I always do it more than once. So here you see four different examples of it. I just do it so that I can potentially shake off some previous things that might have been happening you know, based on my previous prompts, because sometimes that happens. You can find more information about that on my other uh, video, but I also want to see what Midjourney gives me. Next, Ancient Egypt, and this is what I get. If I don't like what I see, I just move on after the first two reruns or after the first rerun, because the reality is that not all words and elements go together. So for example, for that Ancient Egypt, I didn't run several reruns just because I wasn't super happy with the results. Now, however, with adding Alien into the mix, this is amazing. I really love these ones, so I ran quite a few of these, but I'll bear you and I will only show you two of these. You can go experiment yourself. Another one of my favorites is adding duotone uh, pretty much to anything. These images look fantastic in my opinion. What do you think? Here are two of my favorite ones. Glitch is another word that I love to use in prompts or glitch effect. And this is what I got. Whimsical is another style and you can now see um, the effects of the whimsical. Now, I am continuously just observing as I'm creating these prompts with the different variable just to see what happens. And then I'm trying to store that information and see if I can draw any conclusions or if I can use this information for later. Horror is also a pretty good one here. That's pretty scary. And this one. Pop art in general creates amazing, fun images like this one. And this one. Vector art is another super fun one. Again, you could add any variable that you want into this mix. 
In this one, I added photograph because what I just noticed and observed on those other images that most of them were illustrations. I mean, obviously, I also added vector art and pop art, so that made them those styles. If I wanted to create a photograph for this particular thing, I would have to specify it. So here is the photograph. Observations that I made with this particular exercise is one, most of the time with the word enigma, I got female person. So if you wanted enigma to be specified as, for example, a male person, you'd want to add that to your prompt. So you could say enigma male and then add whatever you wanted to add. Number two, I often see fish and birds and some other strange flying things. This is what Midjourney gives quite a lot, especially if you are not giving Midjourney a lot to work with. So these are random things that it likes to throw up in the sky usually. So just to be something to be aware of. And then number three is that most of them were illustrations, as I just already said. I do all of this to help figure out how mid-journey works and what do I need to add to the prompts. So this is simply just one way to do this. It doesn't mean it's the only way or the right way, but this is a quick way for you to do a lot of different variations and run different things while minimizing other effects. If you start with a massively long prompt, it's going to be so much harder to control all the elements. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.